All right, look, it's almost impossible to gain body fat from eating a lot of protein. All right, guys, let's talk about this for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I, I remember the first time that um, I kind of figured this out. We've talked we, on the show when uh, when we pieced together the processed foods, uh, you know, tip right, telling clients to stop eating processed foods. And I wish I remember, like, if it was something that I kind of like did myself first, and then I was like, oh wow, I wonder if this works with clients. But I remember, and, and your baked potato thing that you always talk about, like try eating like four or five baked potatoes with nothing on it, and it's like impossible, yeah. you know. But yet you could crush a bag of potato chips. Uh, proteins, like it's similar that way. If, if you're getting, and that I think that's that's the, the the one caveat to that. What you're saying is that if it's uh, whole foods that you're getting that protein, because you could probably get fat off of eating processed foods that are full of protein yeah, or there's that protein Snickers bars now. So, right. I mean, what are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, so there's two things to this. One is what you're saying. Protein is extremely satiating. It's really hard to just overeat a lot of protein because it just, you hit a wall. You don't want to eat more. This is what, if you ever talk to anybody who's ever done a carnivore diet, they'll tell you, like, I just, uh, I can't eat anymore. That's the biggest issue is, like, really trying to be able to eat enough calories. It's it's really difficult. You get so full and uh and it's just like it's just too much to where I, I'm not even hungry after. Yeah. Well, like do you guys remember half when, the calories when we all went on the ketogenic diet way early on? So before we had, I think it was before we even had Dom on the show, and we were it was just getting kind of popular. And we did school. a high protein version, mm -hmm. yeah. and we um, and then we all decided we'd run it and we'd do it. And I would just happen to be in the middle of like still, I think just wrapping up competing even. Or you were was, trying to bulk. Yeah I, was, yeah, I was in a bulk, and I was like, okay, well, let's just try and do this. And I remember I just how hard it was. And that's kind of what made me kind of throw in the towel was, dude, I just, I'm not able to eat 5,000 calories of just proteins and fats. Like you fill yeah. up so fast. Yeah. So there's two parts to this. So first off, I do want to be clear. If you eat more calories and you burn, you will gain uh, body <laughs> yeah, That's fat. science. Right. That's science. <laughs> but here's why I made that statement about protein. One is what we just talked about. It's incredibly satiating. So it's hard to overeat protein in comparison to carbohydrates and fats. But number, especially carbohydrates. But number two, they've done studies where they've bumped people's calories through carbohydrates, fats, or just proteins. And at the end of these studies, what they found is that the the increase in calories that came from proteins resulted in less fat gain and some muscle gain. That's even if calorie all things equal. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Now, now here's the speculation. The speculation is one. Protein has this incredible thermic effect. So eating more protein means your body tends to burn more calories. So the the you know the calories in versus calories out, like that rule of thermodynamics, it still stands, right? It's a it's a rule of physics. But eating a lot of protein tends to change the calories out side of the formula. Eating more of it tends to make your metabolism burn more calories. And then the second part is we all know that, and, and again, this is clear in studies as, uh, as well eating a higher protein diet tends to lead to more muscle gain. And what does more muscle do? It burns more calories. So if you're eating a lot more protein versus other the other macronutrients and your calories are high, you're less likely uh, to gain body fat in comparison to the others. And or it's going to be hard to eat a lot more when it's just protein. Now, is there still information out there that's like sort of deterring people from this in terms of like the mTOR and like yeah. can't, cancer sort of being a scare with that? Yeah, so uh, so mTOR is uh, mammalian target rapamycin. I think I'm saying that right. And this- Because I remember these things. Yeah. It just, mammalian. Yeah, listen, I don't remember a lot of things. It's funny. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'll be with my family and they'll ask me certain questions. I'll be like, I have no idea. And I'll yeah. remember something random. Or we'll have a meeting, a meeting just, and 30 mammalian. minutes later, he forgets what he's supposed to do afterwards. Uh, so. Completely. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's a skill that's good for podcasting. So thank you, God, for this. <laughs> Help me find this, oh, it's perfect. this career. Yeah. Uh, anyway- so this particular, um, you know, mTOR signals muscle growth, but it drives the growth of a lot of things. If you spike mTOR when you have cancer, you'll probably accelerate the growth of cancer. So people will say things like, high protein diets will increase your risk of cancer. Not true. By the way, carbohydrates also feed cancers and even fats in some cases, although not as often, can feed some cancer. So there's a difference between a environment where cancer is present and in, and in a healthy environment. In a healthy environment, and by the way, if you have cancer, a lot of things change. There's a lot of things that you need to change and modify. In some cases, they'll put you on hormone blocking drugs and other things, which, which normally would be a bad thing. So that's the thing to consider. But when you're healthy, in the studies with healthy people, high protein diets 
um, are not only perfectly healthy. In fact, a study just came out showing that in older populations, higher protein diets are connected to lower causes of all to lower risks. Excuse me, of all cause mortality. Again, probably because higher protein diets result in in more strength gains or at least strength preservation. And we know now how strongly connected strength is to all cause mortality as you age. The stronger you are when you're older, the less likely you are to die from, you know, from all different causes. Well, this is where that, that tip comes from too, where we tell people to eat, eat protein first. So you sit down and you get your, yes. your plate instead of filling up on the bread or the chips, just eat the protein, protein and fats first and then vegetables and then move to like your um, starchy carbs. And many times just by telling somebody the order that they eat like that, uh, will limit the amount of carbohydrates and calories that they consume. And it's been like one of those tips that, and it just, it's a, it's a psychological thing too, because you're not telling the client, you can't have the carbs or you can't have the chips or you can't have the bread. It's just, Hey, go eat your protein and fats and veggies first, and then go ahead and enjoy that. And many times what ends up happening by the time you get to those, you're just full. Yeah. I think there's also this myth that, and there's some truth to this, that because humans evolved for, for the vast majority of human history where food was scarce, that we evolved to just eat when food is in front of us and we'll just eat ourselves to death. There's a little bit of truth to that, but in reality, but the truth is there's a lot of uh, falseness in that in the sense that our bodies, even back then, had safeguards against uh, overeating because it would have killed you back then just like it does today. Maybe not obesity, that would have been much more difficult to, to, to accomplish, but like overeating and damaging your your digestive system or causing yourself to feel sick. So, you know, we do this hunt, we kill this animal or we come across this, you know, naturally growing tree with fruit on it. Even it was still detrimental for us to just eat until we made ourselves sick even back then. So, we have these natural safeguards and it's satiety yeah. and we hit it, but the way we get around it now is we take different flavors and foods and combine them in ways, usually engineer them in ways to make you want to make you eat even more and more to kind of get past that barrier because those barriers that we have evolved with whole natural foods and evolved with where sugar was quite rare. I mean, tell me where you would find sugar in nature, not with like modern agriculture, none of that stuff. If you're it's fruit, yeah, you know, fruit, but barely. Yeah, like you, you might find some berries. Yeah, they're bitter for the most part. Yeah, or an apple. An apple. An apples back then were like full of seeds and, yeah. and lots of fiber. Yeah, I, remember, I remember seeing an article that like compared like a, our fruit today versus fruit just like a hundred years ago. Did you like know how that dramatically different? It you was. can look at old paintings from the Renaissance like of fruit. bananas and stuff. Yeah, and they're sliced open. They don't even and, look the same. No, yeah. bananas are full of seeds. Apples are very little flesh. Uh, you know, fruit was way less uh, packed with sugar. That's just how it occurred in nature. Now we we bred them to make them like super delicious. And so, do you not think that after a, a big hunt back in the days that you you wouldn't gorge out on the food, or you just couldn't because it's all meat that you were consuming? And so, because that it it wasn't super palatable, you wouldn't I hijack you would, those systems. I think you definitely would eat until you were satisfied. Because yeah, you, you definitely would do that. That would be silly. If you don't eat for a week and then finally you get a kill, mm -hmm. everybody is eating as much as they possibly can, probably to until they are almost feel sick. I Yes, would think. But, but the those barriers that satiety signal that uh, palate fatigue kicked in. So you'd eat and eat and eat like man, I can't eat anymore. Now what you what you and this is from looking at studies of modern hunter gatherers, the foods that are uh, prioritized or the parts of the animal that are prioritized tend to be the organs and the fatty parts. Mm -hmm. So we would eat those first. Obviously, the most nutrient dense. Like animal liver is so packed full of nutrients. It's like the right. nature's multivitamin. So we'd eat that first. Eat the fatty parts for, and then all the lean tissue was leaf was left, uh, you know, for later on, or or if it went bad, it went bad. I mean, in fact, there's something called I think I talked about this once on a podcast. I think it's called uh, rabbit starvation, or I think that might be the term. Right. This is where trappers Hunt trappers up in Alaska, right? Yeah, yeah. or even in in the West, you know, the meat's long time, not fatty enough. Yeah, they would yeah. catch lots of rabbits and they would still, still starve. starve to death. You see that on that uh, that alone show. Oh yeah, you seen that? You seen? I remember like one of the seasons, the guy got like a buffalo or something, like a really lean animal. No, it was an elk, a moose. Uh, yeah, and and, moose and the, and the fat know. got stolen. Yeah, by, it like, wasn't a, an elk. It was like a, either a moose or like a buffalo. I or saw something. that. Yeah, it was one of those that are like really lean meats and. You would think that that's enough meat for, I mean, that's enough technically meat for someone to live off of for a year. 
Uh, and it still wasn't enough for him because I, he ended up, I remember like the Wolverines got his, uh, the, his fat. Li- the fat or, the fat and the liver. And so all he had was this lean meat and then he was like starving. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. He, he, he literally, he took all the fats and he separated them and put them in this like, uh, he thought like animals wouldn't get to it and the freaking Wolverine got to it, stole it all. Yeah. And all he had left was lean meat. How great, how st- frustrating would that be oh, you're gonna dude. starve to death and you have all this meat yeah right. and it's right there in front of you it just makes me think i mean how it's just so interesting where we are now where we can select like uh vegetable based meats or we can we can engineer these kind of meats that aren't even from animals how, how do you even get satiated from that yeah how do you even get that signal it's like to me it's interesting like is it mainly from nuts and from beans and it's like that's like for like a vegan like that's got to be really difficult to ever feel like you're fully so satisfied you ever seen the the ingredient list on the like beyond meat yeah, doug maybe you should pull this well, it's up. all like vegetable oils and, and there, there's like 50 ingredients yeah in no it's crazy it's there's like a bunch super, of things it's like super now, science. How, how long do you think you need to be like monk like before you become in tune naturally to those systems because they're there still right like, and I feel like we talk about all the time about trying to become aware of those natural signs that your body's trying to tell you, no, don't eat this or you're full already. Like, you know, how long do you think it's for somebody who has like no connection at all to them and distracted all the time? Like, how long would they have to be like monk like to get reconnected to them? I think it's a constant practice, dude. Because, well, it is because you're, 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 taking, in, you're taking insults from the, the opposite side, right? The yeah. TV, the phone, the, you know, stress, work, like. And then you've got all this incredible food all around you and it's super tasty and exp- inexpensive and really easy to get. I think it's a constant practice, dude. This is, is like there, a, is there is there stuff to support like people who live like in rural areas versus in like cities that would are technically would used be- to be not anymore. It used to be that way because rural areas didn't have access, but now our markets are so damn effective that people are obese everywhere. In fact, in certain cities, people are less obese because the cities were designed before cars were invented. So people yeah, have so to you walk. walk around everywhere. Yeah. So it's like, doesn't matter, dude, where you're at now, you're going to be, you're, you've got this food accessible and yeah. you're going to, and it's, it's going to be a problem. It is a problem. So yeah. yeah, let me, let's look at this ingredient list, Doug, when he pulls it up. What, it, what does that show here? Let's see. Water, pea protein, expeller press, canola oil, coconut oil, rice protein, natural flavors, which is, I don't know how many other things, cocoa yeah, butter, that mean? mung bean protein, Methyl cellulose, potato starch, apple extract, pomegranate extract, salt, potassium chloride, vinegar, lemon juice concentrate, sunflower lecithin, beet juice extract. The beet juice, by the way, is to make it look bloody. Yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah, so I, I'm yeah. not a fan of this argument, though. By the way, that's what the I know you're bringing it up to to make a point. Like if you look, you flip meat around, it's just meat. But like when you just break, you say all those things. For the most part, most of those things are in a lot of foods. It's the, co- it's the fact that there's the, all the combinations. No, I get it. Yeah. I get it. You know, but I, I just I think it's a weak argument. It's a weak argument. Yeah, to, yeah I, th- I agree. I know because because if that. you because I guarantee if you and I were to extract everything that's in there, you'd be like, oh yeah, I eat that and other things, or I've had that. Like they're not. It's not that horrific. You know, it's not as bad as if I turn around my rock star and look at what's in the back yeah. of that. You know, that's probably a lot worse for me than than this thing is is totally and that's kind of like the go-to argument that everybody leans on is like look at this there's 70 things in here versus no, yeah one. it's just not it, it doesn't really compare to actual meat i think is the point well it's yeah. not and that that to me that's a better argument is the uh the, how nutrient dense meat is and I, I think that would be a better way to explain it, is look like, look at all the health benefits you get get from eating real meat and show that versus okay you can put all these things in here to try and emulate this, but look at the the value of this versus to me, that's a better argument than the look what's in it. Like scare tactic to yeah. how much stuff, you know, it's it. funny. It's uh, the, the demise of how we value meat really started happening. Once we started separating ourselves from the process of raising and killing meat. Mm-hmm. as soon as we separated that you had these huge, you know, slaughter factories with animals being you know run through and treated a certain way and pumped full of hormones or whatever because we're not connected to it yeah. and then people never kill an animal themselves so they have no respect for it and they go to the grocery store and they just see the meat and the plastic and then because they have no respect uh they don't understand the value and so like i'm not going to eat meat anymore and a lot of people run into problems with that because you have to be more you can definitely be vegan and be healthy for sure you just have to be much more planned, and it also wouldn't be possible without modern grocery stores and modern markets. There's just so much variety now; you can get all the nutrients you need. Whereas, you know, a thousand years ago, uh, you would starve. You would starve if you didn't eat any meat. So, yeah, yeah. it's uh, you know, it's really interesting. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe. <laughs>